Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Cole, and over the next few minutes, I'm going to discuss the blood-derived products that we use in the treatment of osteoarthritis. The things that will be in this talk include things we can use today in the clinic that do not require an IDE, a BLA, or a CE process, but that are also often used off-label when used by us as physicians. They're not necessarily regenerative, nor, form nor are they formally dependent upon the cellular activity, i.e. stem cells, of what is being injected. These are generally autologous blood-derived products that do not involve post-acquisition modification. In other words, in the United States, we talk about the 361 pathway. They are typically provided in the office, but can be provided as an adjunct to surgery. And the things I will specifically be discussing include PRP and bone marrow aspirate concentrate, and then a little more stuff. Keep in mind, as I've mentioned, that the underlying principle is that we are not offering our patients regeneration, as we have often uh, our, our patients have often been misled, modifying perceptions based on based upon a picture that you see here, not uncommonly seen in billboards or airline magazines and so forth. There is a significant need. In the United States alone, there's over 52 million people that have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis. Many of these individuals are less than 65, and many of them, greater than a million, will go on to joint replacement. So what's happening is the demand is absolutely driving the supply. I'm sure all of us have experienced on a weekly basis where a patient comes in and says, look, doctor, I'm here for stem cell therapy as, you, as I do not want surgery, and I hear that you can regenerate new cartilage in my knee. We have a number of orthobiologic options that we can consider, but I would submit to you that the things that we're going to talk about are basically bone marrow aspirate and PRP. These are blood-derived products, not stem cells in and of themselves. But we always have to ask ourselves, are we, are we really regenerating anything? And much of the literature shows that our current use of marrow-derived MSCs, for example, is often used to upregulate the host environment so the host can actually provide a reparative response rather than the things that we are injecting. Just as a brief overview, the regulatory environment is fairly complex. The 351 pathway is essentially, is essentially a drug. And this invol involves a, former, a formal IDE BLA going through the FDA. It often requires a randomized controlled trial hitting both pain and function to be successful. When we talk about disease modification, I would say that's largely aspirational. And the price tag is between 30 and $60 million over a timeline that is a minimum of six to eight years. So the things that I will be talking about are below the bar products, such as PRP and bone marrow aspirate. These are autologous products that are minimally manipulated, used at the point of care for homologous use. Thus, that homologous issue is one of the things that we need to probably question, because oftentimes the way we use them are, absolutely, are actually off-label. But this is the crux of the 361 pathway. These typically... Uh, can be used in an office setting, uh, providing anabolic and anti-catabolic molecules that will modify the arthritic or regenerative process. I'll tell you, my own office, there seems to be increasing demand for this by our patient population to provide alternatives to surgical intervention to modify symptoms. It's also important to think about how our patients actually present. I've often contemplated how we can sort of compartmentalize patients who prevent with osteoarthritis who have inflammation. They basically have this wet synovitis, effusions, they may get worse with exercise, they may complain of stiffness. And then there's patients who have osteoarthritis who don't have inflammation, who are very load-related. These patients basically have less reactivity with, bone, with exercise other than load-related pain and often have dry knees. It's important to understand that there is a tremendous placebo effect in all of the things we do. In our study, which was a meta-analysis of level one studies, we showed that the intraarticular application of, 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 of saline yield a statistically and clinically meaningful improvement in patient reported outcomes up to six months in patients who were being treated for knee osteoarthritis when it was compared to HA in level one studies. Now, one step further, this is another publication that was interesting because we showed that saline and sham equivalent, which is basically putting the needle in, taking it out and not injecting anything, showed the same PROs at all time points. And this suggests that the response attributed to a placebo is due to the contextual aspect of the clinical study, in other words, due to the procedure, and not something physiologic, which, is, which has previously been suggested with the use of normal saline. So it's the act of giving the injection within a clinical trial rather than the saline itself, which was leading to symptom relief. As an overview, PRP basically has two essential formats. One is a single spin cycle, which is plasma-based, that has fewer platelets, maybe fewer white cells, maybe more efficient. 
And a Buffy Co PRP system, which is a double spin system, which is typically associated with higher amounts of platelets, more white blood cells, maybe a longer processing time, and maybe an increased cost. But there are significant anti-inflammatory and matrix restorative mechanisms that are present in PRP that you see here, including synthesis, contragenesis, decreased pain, anti-inflammatory effects, <clears throat> maybe even producing hyaluronic acid, and maybe anti-infective. What's probably more important than the number of PRPs are the cellular composition of PRP. And this is one of the things that we looked at showing the catabolic cytokine concentrations were influenced as much by the platelet concentration as it was by the cellular composition, which has led to the, the, the focus on the number of white cells, for example, or neutrophils that are present in various PRP preparations. We know that PRP can be pro-contragenic if used in the right environment, can be anti-contragenic. Uh, and can uh, lead to all of these factors, as I've already suggested. Probably most important is that PRP can be associated with MSC recruitment in a situation where we provided access to host MSCs. PRP's use in osteoarthritis has been investigated in a number of clinical trials. In this study, we essentially looked at the effect of leukocyte concentration in clinical trials and showed that leukocyte poor PRP was better than hyaluronic acid, leukocyte rich PRP, and placebo in leading to out, uh, improved outcomes in, uh, in PROs, specifically here showing the Womack scores based upon leukocyte concentration. This is another study where we compared in a double blind fashion the outcomes of intraarticular treatment for neosteoarthritis using HA versus PRP, three injections of each. It was a double blind study. And basically we saw with PRP at six months and one year, less pain, improvements in IKDC. And we also showed that IL-1 beta and TNF alpha was had a better profile and those were treated with PRP versus HA at three months aspiration analysis. There are a number of other studies uh, that have been uh, performed and published on the evaluation of PRP and osteoarthritis as you see here. It has been shown that leukocyte poor PRP improved pain at six months. It did it at six and 12 months in the second study, was better than the placebo. And in the last study, looking at a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, PRP was better than saline, hyaluronic acid, and steroids. In fact, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons Clinical Practice Guidelines recently suggested that PRP may reduce pain and improve function in patients with symptomatic osteoarthritis of the knee. However, they provided a limited strength recommendation and cited heterogeneous studies with mixed results but there was some determination that three intraarticular leukocyte poor PRP injections had more favorable results. Now, what about hyaluronic acid? Now, it is not a blood derived product, but there's some consideration for combining to uh, achieve a synergistic effect, hyaluronic acid with PRP. There are a number of studies that have showed improved clinical outcomes with the use of hyaluronic acid. In fact, the FDA has said, while it's not recommended for the vast majority of patients, they still left the door open to treat patients. A subset of patients may still benefit from the use of hyaluronic acid based upon the literature that was evaluated in their clinical practice guideline. PRP and HA for osteoarthritis has some basic science support, as you see here. And in fact, clinically, there have been a couple of studies this was a review of five randomized controlled trials with 941 patients showing that hyaluronic acid plus PRP was better than PRP alone at 12 months. The second study, which we reported, looked at four trials, 377 patients, showing that HA plus PRP was better than HA alone at 12 months. It's my opinion that PRP and HA can be considered for the treatment of osteoarthritis. It may be superior to HA or PRP alone in the absence of economic considerations could be considered as a dominant treatment strategy. In this study, we looked at the appropriate price and we showed that PRP was cost effective at a total price inclusive of all the clinic visits, the procedure and the injection of less than 1,192 American dollars over a 12 month period. And that was compared to HA and saline solution. Finishing up as a second blood derived product are medicinal signaling cells. As you know, we rarely talk about them now in the form of stem cells when we're speaking about bone marrow aspirate. These may function to recruit other stem cells, secrete bioactive factors, and modulate the environment in an anti-inflammatory or immuno, in an immunomodulatory capacity. Bone marrow aspirate concentrate has been looked at in the treatment of osteoarthritis. This first study looked at eight studies at an average of 13 months. 
They looked at bone marrow aspirate uh, concentrate achieving PROs that improved over baseline, but it was not better than PRP, adipose, or placebo. In another evaluation, they looked at 25 randomized patients with bilateral knee osteoarthritis. PROs were actually improved in the bone marrow aspirate group and the saline group. Both groups actually demonstrated improvement. This study by Adam Anst looked at PRP for the treatment of OA, compared leukocyte-rich PRP versus bone marrow aspirate, and they both demonstrated efficacy. There was no placebo group, and this study was not blinded. We recently have completed a study looking at 91 patients in a double-bind randomized controlled trial, a one-to-one -one -one randomization in patients who have meniscal disease with any element of osteoarthritis with two-year follow-up. So as a surgical adjunct, we saw no difference between groups in clinical outcome scores at two years when bone marrow aspirin was used as an adjunct at the time of arthroscopic menisectomy in patients with osteoarthritis. Now, there are, others, there are some other uh, util, uh, aspects where uh, blood-derived products can be utilized. If you look at the literature, it's been shown that microfracture plus PRP might be better than microfracture alone for the treatment of focal chondral defects. Bone marrow aspirate placed under a collagen membrane might actually improve the quality of repair tissue for focal cartilage defects. And we have recently shown that bone marrow aspirate can be useful to improve the integration of an osteochondral allograft by a CT scan during a cartilage transplantation procedure using a prolonged fresh osteochondral allograft. So my conclusions on blood-derived products and the treatment of NEOA are the following. Leukocyte poor PRP can reduce pain and improve function in patients with NEOA compared to placebo, hyaluronic acid, or corticosteroids when used alone. Leukocyte poor PRP with the uh, addition of hyaluronic acid could be as effective or more effective than either agent alone and is better than placebo and corticosteroids when used alone. Bone marrow aspirate concentrate for the, knees, for, the, for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis can be effective, but it does not appear to be better than other agents, including placebo. And finally, the efficacy of saline is not necessarily physiologic, but rather due to the contextual experience of being in a study. In other words, the act of getting a treatment or an injection is what seems to drive the difference rather than the placebo effect uh, or the physiologic impact of putting saline within a joint. Thank you very much for your attention.